Hello, 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 and welcome to another Wednesday live stream. It's good to be back, isn't it, Lynn? It's been a it while. It is, <laughs> but you're looking better on it than me. <laughs> you're looking after very your, good. After you're your long great. holiday, you look so relaxed and uh, and happy. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute mm -hmm. because I did see some animals and we are talking about pets today. But before mm -hmm. we do that, if people are tuning in and watching for the first time or if you're watching the replay, thank you. We'll introduce ourselves. My name's Craig. I'm from the website mansioningles.com where you can study English for free. There are free courses and materials there for you, especially if you're a Spanish speaker. And there's a podcast over at inglespodcast.com that we publish every week that will help you with your English. So find it on the website or wherever you listen to podcasts. And with me over there, my good friend Lynn, who I haven't seen for a few weeks. So it's really yeah. nice to see her again from putitlikethis.com. That's right. And putitlikethis.com is my website. I'm an online English teacher. Um and I, if you're interested in online classes, um, the difference, I suppose, with Put It Like This is that I try to create a course around the people to fit their objectives only. So I don't offer standardized courses. It's usually all tailor-made courses. So if you have specific objectives in English, it could be to pass an exam. It could be because you're an English teacher and you want to improve your pronunciation when you give English classes. It could be that you just want conversation. You want to improve your fluency. Um, or you could be a business person and you need to prepare meetings or presentations. So basically, you tell me what your specific skills are and then I'll try to create a course to deliver you that so that you can find your own voice in English. Um, so if you're interested, go to putitlikethis.com and you'll find out more information. And there's also a contact page there where you can get in contact with me. Okay. Mm. Putitlikethis.com. So we are going to talk about pets and animals today. And hello, Hema. Hema's here. Good to see you, Hema. It's been a, a few weeks. Hi, Hema. <laughs> Good to it's see you It's great to too. see you again. Yeah. Uh-huh. And hopefully more people will be joining us soon. So yeah. um, we're going to look at some vocabulary first and then discuss some questions with you about pets. Now, if you're watching the replay, you can also write in the chat. We always look at the chat after the video. So feel free to comment if you have an opinion on what we're going to discuss. Mm -hmm. But my first question to Hema, who's watching live, <laughs> and to uh -huh. you, Lynn, uh, are you an animal lover? Um, well, I'll let Hema write her response. Um, I am. I think I do love, uh, well, I like animals, I think. I don't know whether I'm an animal lover, because I have to admit, I haven't, oh, I don't own a pet. Yeah. And I, and I haven't, I think the last time I owned a pet was when I was a small child and I owned a goldfish. <laughs> I had a goldfish, which is a, one of those little orange fish that you put in a bowl. And my parents allowed us to have a goldfish. And then we went on holiday. And unfortunately, when we came back from holiday, the goldfish was dead. And, oh, yeah. um, and I, I, we actually had two goldfish. And when we came back from holiday, there was only one goldfish in the bowl. So we suspect that one ate the other one. And uh, we had left food for the goldfish. <laughs> but they weren't for some piranhas, reason, were they? They were goldfish. No, not but piranhas. I don't know what happened to them. But it was a bit devastating when I was a small child. And I think that just proved that actually my family and me, we didn't really know how to look after animals. <laughs> <laughs> really so I, I don't think I can call myself an animal well I'm not I'm certainly not an animal expert <laughs> let's put it that way and I but I do like animals but I'm not sure whether I'm competent enough to look after a pet I think mm -hmm. and your kids never asked for uh, an, any animal pets when they were younger they didn't want a, a, a kitten or a dog Oh yes, they did, and I know. I know when I was a child, I <clears throat> I really wanted animals, and I pestered my pestered 
that's that's a funny word, isn't it? Pestered. That's when you keep saying, "Mummy, mummy, mummy, give me this, give me this, give me this. I want, I want, I want." So when I was when I was small, I did pester my family for a long time, my parents, and I said, "Please, I want a pet. I want a pet." And they always said no to dogs and cats and things. And after the goldfish episode, that was the end. Mm. And um, and then. Because I'm a parent, what happens when you're a parent is you turn into your mother and father. So my children <laughs> pestered me when I was small for dogs and cats. And I always said, no, I've got enough to do with looking after you three. I can't look after an animal as well. Yeah. So I said no. Um, but they wanted, yeah. Emma says that she is an animal ah, lover and she great. had dogs in the past. Oh, wow. So you're an expert too then, Emma. That's good. I know there are a few more people watching. I think there are seven people watching. So let oh, us know right. where you're from mm -hmm. and who you are and if you are an animal lover. And what uh, about you, know. Craig? Are you? I am a dog lover. I did mm -hmm. have a dog when I was growing up and mm -hmm. I loved the dog and I love dogs. But uh, when I started traveling, I just didn't think it was fair to have a dog. Mm -hmm. and then put the dog in kennels or ask favors from friends to look after mm -hmm. the dog. It didn't seem fair to me. So uh, I haven't had a dog since I was a child. But mm -hmm. I do love dogs. I love watching dogs, and I love um, seeing dogs walking around the beach here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not very keen on pets. I don't like a on cat cats. very much. You're not a on cat cats. Uh -huh. I'm not a cat, I think I'm not that, a cat person. That... That often happens, isn't it? People say they're a cat lover or a dog lover. Uh huh. I like both. I, I, I think I like both. When I was a child, when I was on campsites, I always used to run after the kittens that were stray kittens, the wild ones. Yeah. And I used to look after them and, and play with them a lot. But I also love dogs. And it was like you said, when people have dogs, I quite like dogs especially when I was a child, more so when I was a child. I'm a little bit more cautious now around um, petting other people's dogs. I, I don't go to the dog and love the dog crazy. You know, I, I'm I was not about, like that now. When I was about six years old, I was in the mm -hmm. street and there was a cat in the street and I picked up the cat and I was stroking it to do this, is mm -hmm. to stroke the animal. And suddenly a dog came up the street and mm -hmm. the cat saw the dog and the claws of the cat came out and scratched my arm Ooh, uh -huh. and I, really badly. It was bleeding quite badly. Oh, and since uh -huh. then, I, I've been not nervous of cats, but not I, not very keen on them. Yeah, not very keen on them. Mm -hmm. Vicente is watching. He's from Cartagena and he does like pets. Do you have any cats or dogs, Vicente? Do you have any pets? Uh -huh. pets? Any, I keep saying pets instead of cats. Do you uh -huh. have any cats or dogs at the moment? Uh -huh. And then the other Vicente, Vicente Barea, says that he likes German shepherds. Mm -hmm. And he said they're marvelous four paws friends. Now, that's interesting. The, the word paw, P-A-W, that Vicente has used is absolutely right. And that's for the what would you say, the extremity, the limb of a, the of hands, a dog? The hands the, of yeah, the, dog, the hands feet. and feet. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we don't say that dogs have hands and they don't have feet. They have paws. Um, but if you're going to use that, Vicente, as an adjective, like you have, they're marvellous, but four paw, you would have to say four poured friends that's and not I easy would to use, say is it that's not easy to say that's with hyphens so put a hyphen after four and then instead of pause in the plural put an ed four poured friends uh -huh. my four poured friend my four poured friends but it's very difficult to pronounce uh -huh. and i had a belgian shepherd i don't know what a belgian shepherd looks like um mm -hmm. i'll have to google that and she was called ines yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. okay lovely mm -hmm. Um, let's look at some vocabulary then connected to mm -hmm. dogs if we're talking about dogs. Now, um, I said before that I don't like having a dog because if you travel, you need to put the dog somewhere with a neighbor, with a friend, with family, or in a kennel. A kennel is where you can pay to keep dogs. It's like a hotel for dogs. Mm -hmm. And that's a kennel. So to keep dogs in kennels and mm -hmm. to take dogs for a walk outside, then you often attach 
something to the dog so that the dog doesn't run away. And that's mm -hmm. called a lead. That's more common in British English. And a leash, I think, is more common in American English. Mm -hmm. so that's to... the thing that uh, that you hold the, the dog with. I want to say one word to do with dog's kennels mm -hmm. because the way that Craig has written it there, that is like the name for the... The, the the like a school or a kindergarten for dogs right it's not a school it doesn't teach them anything but it looks after them like a hotel for dogs but if you use the word kennel in this singular then a kennel is the little wooden it's usually wooden structure some people have a kennel in their garden and that's the, the little house where the dog sleeps they're not very popular kennel like to use a kennel in Spain but I think that's because people uh, live in apartments right yeah but they don't have gardens they so don't much. really have gardens but in in areas in England a lot of people don't have the dogs sleeping in the house they have the dogs sleeping outside in the garden but in a kennel and the kennel um, is like a little wooden house with a little door. And when the dog wants to go to sleep, it usually puts itself inside the kennel. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's in the singular. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. talking about lead, you can use lead as a verb to lead the dog, to pull the dog on mm -hmm. the lead. So it's a verb and a noun. And this is this is a collar. I'm wearing a shirt with a collar mm -hmm. here. And a dog collar goes around the dog's neck. So you attach mm -hmm. the lead or leash to the collar. Mm -hmm. And it's a good idea to have your address on the collar so that the, if the dog gets lost, you know where mm -hmm. the dog lives. Mm -hmm. I think now they have um, a very good invention, though, now, don't they? They have microchips. And a lot of dogs have a chip implanted, I, I mm -hmm. believe. Not just yep. in the collar, but they have it implanted under their skin. And so if they get lost, they can be found. Uh, people know where, whose, whose dog it is. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. exactly. Then the next word we have is breed. And the breed means the type of dog that you have. So some people have mentioned German shepherds, Belgian shepherds. Um, what other types of dogs? Bulldogs, poodles. I had, I had, uh -huh. a, schnauz, I had a German dog called a schnauzer. A schnauzer, a schnauzer or a schnauzer, uh -huh. yeah, a miniature schnauzer. schnauzer. Terriers, yeah. yeah Terriers. Also. So a breed is like the race of dog that you have. Uh huh. Begonia loves dogs. She's got um, we don't know what kind of dog, but she does love animals. What kind of mm. dog do you have, Begonia? Let us do know. You know in English. And the word? Vicente mm -hmm. had uh, two dogs. Mm hmm. Yeah, ah, okay. Lots of, lots of dog love. Any cat lovers watching? Any cat, lo <laughs> Any cat lovers? Calling all cat lovers out uh -huh. there? Because cats also have breeds as well, don't they? There are breeds mm -hmm. of cats like Siamese, um, Siamese cat, and uh, I, I don't know the names don't of know, cats, maybe. but there are breeds. Uh huh. There are breeds of cats. tabby cats. Uh huh. And then we have obedience training. That's not usually for cats. Cats don't like to be trained, do they? No. But no, dogs like to be trained. Well, I don't know whether they like it, but usually people try to train dogs to be obedient. And some people send or they, they go regularly to dog training classes. Um, I know my friend in Germany, she got a, a dog and she's all in for, I think, for the first year of its life. Every Sunday, they would go to a couple of hours of obedience training. It's a good idea. And I have to say that the dog is really, really well behaved. So, I mean, you know, those those training classes seem to work, don't they? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, Begonia has a Yorkshire Terrier. Yeah, little little mm. dog. Uh -huh. yeah, nice. <laughs> I sometimes call those Begonia yappy dogs because a lot of Yorkshire Terriers are always going yap, 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 yap. <laughs> they're often barking so I call them yappy dogs can you put yappy in the in the in the chat y a double p y and that's the little sort of snappy sound that they make yappy mm -hmm. yeah to yap or to yeah <laughs> Begonia says and yes, they yap. <laughs> apart from yapping, we've got other noises that dogs make. Woof, woof. Mm -hmm. 
uh, is to bark. That's the verb to bark. Woof, woof. Although I think in Spanish, you don't say woof, woof. You say wow, wow or something wow, similar. Wow, wow. wow. Uh -huh, yeah. And is growling to growl. Wow. Dogs mm -hmm. and wolves growl. Mm -hmm. And to whine is, what's a whine, Lynn? Oh, you're going to get, uh, it's like a, ow. Ow. <laughs> when they more well, like a wolf isn't it but a That's whine a howl, is, yeah it's a howl uh -huh. a whine is when maybe when a dog is crying a little bit um and uh that's a horrible i i had neighbors and their dog often cried because they left the dog for yeah. long periods and um it's a terrible sound i i mean i'm not a I'm not an animal expert and I'm not an animal lover, but I have that motherly instinct that when I hear something crying, I want to help. <laughs> and so yeah. I don't like to hear dogs whining. It's it's usually because people are doing something wrong when dogs are whining, I think. <laughs> That's true. Also, people whine. You can use the verb to whine for people who complain a lot. You can say, mm -hmm. stop whining or what mm -hmm. are you whining about? What mm -hmm. are you what are you complaining about? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we sometimes use bark for people too. If people are very angry and she say, she barked the answer at me. <laughs> it's like, go. <laughs> that's that's the, that way of speaking to somebody aggressively is barking mm -hmm, yeah. as well. And we missed the, <clears throat> the idea of to pat or to pet a dog. And that's when you you do that action with your hand. You pat like this. Or sometimes mm -hmm. we also say to pet. But you mentioned another one earlier, which I don't think we wrote. Oh, well, we, we did it with cats, which was to stroke a cat. But you can also stroke a dog. So if you run your hand across the fur of the dog, across the coat of the dog, that movement is to stroke. And this movement is to pat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's move on to cats. Speaking of stroking cats and cats often don't get taken outside for a walk with a lead uh, and a collar mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. they usually do their business. And what they have to do as far as the toilet is concerned, they do in the house in something called a litter tray. So mm -hmm. a cat has a litter tray. And that's what it uses for its business inside the house. Now, I've or, often wondered, mm. you don't you don't have a cat, do you? I, I mean, why do cats go to litter trays or how do you train a cat to go to a litter tray? I have no idea because I'm not a pet lot. I'm not a pet expert. <laughs> I'm but, not sure, but it might be something to do with the smell. The smell in the litter maybe attracts the uh -huh. cat. If there are any cat lovers out there, let us know. Why do cats use litter trays do you mm -hmm. need to train them mm -hmm. or is there something that they do i know they're very clean animals they're constantly washing and licking themselves mm -hmm. they are very clean maybe that's something to do with it that they don't uh -huh. like to to mess their environment they their like environment to, and they like to yeah. mark their environment <clears throat> i think cats so yeah. they by by urinating then they mark that area they're territorial aren't they in that sense so maybe they continually have the habit of going back there as that marking instinct but i've often wondered as well i mean <laughs> i'm i'm showing all my ignorance about uh, about animals to the whole world why can we not train dogs to use the toilet because dogs are so clever you can train them you know to bring your slippers to bring the newspaper and i think you can i've seen videos on tiktok can you train you a dog to go to the toilet that lift up the toilet seat and actually use the toilet i've seen videos of really of doing uh -huh. that yeah ah. yeah although maybe it depends on the breed of dog maybe uh -huh. some dogs obviously a yorkshire terrier would have to jump very high and to he get might up fall to the into toilet and, he and might, might fall, fall in and toilet. drown in the toilet uh -huh. yeah yeah but Question i mean you'd from... think if you if you could train a dog you would think mm -hmm. that a dog might well be able to but i don't know maybe the dog experts can tell me <laughs> tell us please can we is it possible think... to train a dog <laughs> i don't think the dog would be able to wipe its bum after it's finished though that's but that's people don't do that on the streets do they when the dogs when they take the dogs to do their business on the street mm -hmm. they don't wipe their bottoms either do they 
not usually. I have seen people do that, but not uh -huh. usually. No, no, not they usually, don't. They just no. leave it. Uh -huh. Question in from Vicente. He asks, do you have to pay any fee? Is there a cost mm -hmm. for having a pet in the UK? No, I don't think there is. No, there is. You have to have a dog license. We never did. I believe you have to have a license. Do you? So maybe you were just under the, under the auspices of the law. But I believe you have to have a dog license. And well, I will, go I, will, it. I will Google it, Vicente, and I'll have an answer for you in a second. While, because um... with the dog license, you have to, you have to also um, show that your dog has all the vaccinations. And all of the, um, because Britain was very, very conscious of rabies. That's why you couldn't travel with dogs outside Britain. And, well, I mean, it's possible to travel with them, but they have to go into quarantine. The, I've just found the answer. You used to need a dog license ah, okay. in England, and it stopped 35 years ago. Oh, so wow. So now you don't <laughs> need... Sorry. <laughs> well, no, because I had my dog more than 35 years ago, oh, so wow. we broke we broke the law you by not having law. a dog license. Mm -hmm. um, you must make sure your dog is microchipped, as Lynn said before. Ah, okay. But you do not need a license, but you need oh. to get it chipped, microchipped. Ah. Well, I've been out of the UK for more than 35 years, so that's all right. That's forgiven me. <laughs> You're excused. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm excused, yeah. Where are we with cats? Um, stroke, a cat. stroke a cat. Mm -hmm. Whiskers are here at the side of the cat's mouth, hairs that come mm -hmm. out. They're very sensitive. A cat has whiskers. And mm -hmm. as we said before, they, they're very clean. They often lick their fur. And they lick wash with their with their, with their tongue. Their lick tongue. is is that. Uh -huh. But um, when they do lick their fur, very often the fur of the cat comes off and goes into their mouth, and they can have fur balls, which makes them uh, uh, which makes them <laughs> cough, which is not very nice for the cat or or for the owner. <laughs> Do you like no. my cat impersonations? <laughs> it was lovely. It's because I always remember. Do you know the you know the movie Shrek? Yes. Uh, and there's a fantastic scene in the movie where the cat, the puss in boots. He, Antonio he Banderas. Is, yeah, yeah, that's right. And he has his sword at the ready and he's about to engage in fight. And then he says, excuse me. And then he goes. <coughs> yeah, I remember and then, that. And then he coughs up a fur ball. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. So I that. remember that one. Mm -hmm. And meow is the noise that a cat makes very often. And when they're very happy and content, they purr, which is brrr, that very mm -hmm. soft, nice sound. Yeah, low uh -huh. sound. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Gemma says she likes cats, uh, animals in general, but she's not a cat lover. Yeah, I'm Never the same. I, I don't, I don't mind cats, but I'm not. Um, I have a little a theory cat about cats. You know, I think cats are very tactile. So if you like stroking an animal. And if you like hugging an animal, a cat is beautiful, isn't it? Because, I mean, it feels beautiful. We like stroking a cat. And sometimes dogs, it's not the same. Because sometimes dogs, if they have long hair, they can be a bit like, if but they have can, a very but, long but hair. But you can grab a dog, especially a yeah, big dog, uh -huh, where cats yeah. will just, they're so independent They'll yeah. just they'll just go away. Well, this if is they it. Don't feel I think like the it. thing is, if you like to have a relationship, <laughs> probably you've got more chance of like having more interaction with a dog, haven't you? But a cat is a very nice thing to touch. I think. You know. Yeah. Well, let's mm. talk about that because we have a question that refers to that. Why do we have pets? And you said that stroking. I think there is something therapeutic and something that de-stresses you when mm -hmm. you have cats and dogs that you stroke and mm -hmm. i think it's 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 very good and of course if people are lonely a pet will keep you company mm -hmm. what other reasons are there for having pets um maybe people can uh, join in and tell us what do, why do you think people well, have what pets? do you think i i agree with you i think it's very therapeutic and i think it's also there's something nice about pets is that you can communicate with them but not through language 
Yeah. You you communicate with the animals through body language. And I think there's something inherent in in us uh, because we're animals too. And and of course, we communicate with our own species through language and body language or, or sign language, let's say. But it's not usual for human beings, unless you're in an intimate relationship with somebody, to communicate by touching them, <laughs> you know. And But it's nice, isn't it? So I, I, yeah. I, I think there's something that we enjoy with pets because we can actually be hands-on with a pet in a way that we can only be if you have a very particular relationship with uh, like you know your child or or your your partner let's say yeah mm -hmm. and, and to go even further I mean some people do speak to their animals mm -hmm. as if they can understand I see it every day mm -hmm. when I walk yeah. here and people are taking their dogs for a walk and, uh -huh. and I'll say come on come on Keep, uh -huh. keep walking don't stop there and they talk to the animal as if the animal can understand okay. which i find very strange uh, but sometimes i think the animals do understand i mean the animals do respond to certain things don't they if they hear their name being called the animals so the animals do have some kind of they can't speak back to you but mm -hmm. they understand you and that is something very that's like in your it, that that must be something deep within your ego isn't it because let's face it don't we love it when we can talk but nobody speaks back to us <laughs> it's like it's so nice to have a one way communication <laughs> can always win an argument with your dog exactly exactly uh huh so that's very nice isn't it you know and begonia says the interaction with them is very relaxing yeah it's very mm. soothing it's very therapeutic mm -hmm. Definitely. and they won't argue with you do they i don't i suppose no. the the animals don't argue with you uh -huh. they won't tell you what to do and they don't criticize you do they <laughs> no no mm -hmm. they don't okay let's move on to look at some more vocabulary um connected to other animals so we mentioned you mentioned fish didn't you the two fish that you killed <laughs> we killed by accident uh -huh. and the goldfish that lynn uh -huh. had um in a goldfish bowl and yeah. fish when the, when 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 fish live in a big space of water it's called an aquarium mm -hmm. um that's where fish are kept especially tropical fish Mm -hmm. And turtles and tortoise. The difference between a turtle and a tortoise. Does anybody know the difference? Mm -hmm. They're popular pets, aren't they, for children as well? Turtles and tortoises. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they're very similar. The difference is a tortoise lives on land, but a turtle lives in water. In water. Or is, is mm -hmm. very comfortable in water. In water. I mm -hmm. saw, I swam with a turtle. Did you? A big one? one. Because was, a lot of was, people, have, a lot of the kids, they have these little mini terrapins. Oh, no, they? it these was, little it tiny was ones. It's about a meter. Uh -huh. It was about wow. a meter. It was pretty uh -huh. big. And a manta ray, which is oh, huge. I saw uh -huh. a manta ray recently. And you were swimming Amazing. with them? Yeah, snorkeling. Not, not, snorkeling. not, with, not uh -huh. with air on my back, but just snorkeling. No. And I saw the manta ray below. It was, wow. huge. It was like three, four meters across. It was massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, but they're not dangerous, animals. are they, manta rays? I don't think they're dangerous. I don't think so. I didn't get too close just in case. Uh -huh. I saw yeah. a shark, but it was a little baby. It was a, a reef shark on oh. a reef, so it was very small. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But it was going really quickly. I thought, that fish is going fast. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks like a, and it. And then I saw the, you can tell, you can tell With the shape thing. of a shark. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, it's a shark. Wow, my first shark. Wow. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there we go. Moving on. Okay, cages. So, mm -hmm. Cages. Animals that live in cages, particularly birds like parrots mm -hmm. and canaries. Canaries are the little yellow. They're very colorful little birds. And it's quite popular, I think, in Spain still to have birds, isn't it, as pets? Although I think it's becoming less common, but mm -hmm. it, I, I, it, it was, it used to be common in Britain, but I don't think it's so common anymore in Britain to have birds in cages. 
No, there's been a bit of pushback uh, on it. Against, pushback uh -huh. means people going against it because, uh -huh. I mean, I agree. I don't think it's very fair to keep birds in cages. I don't like to see animals no, in I don't cages. Because they're, cause they're very small, aren't they? And then the birds can't fly. Um, yeah. And, um, and, and so canaries. But there are other cages that some people have in their houses for, for animals. Skunks which are and ferrets these are sort of they're mammals aren't they with long mm -hmm. tails they're a kind of rodents really they're like i mean they're not rats but they're very big types of rodents aren't they that are usually found in forests uh, but some people like to have them they have very long furry tails don't they ferrets isn't the sk the skunk is the animal that smells really it badly? It smells. A skunk yeah, smells got, uh, badly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then rabbits. rabbits. A lot of people like rabbits for small children because they're extremely soft and beautiful to touch. They're even nicer to touch than cats. A rabbit because the, the hair is lovely. Little hamsters, um, which are bigger than mice. Well, mice is the plural of mouse. Cheeks. They're like little rodents with tails and gerbils, which is another variant of these kind of um, little rodents, little mammals. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And a lot of people keep them in cages. Now, Begonia has just said, I don't like to see them in jails. Can you see that? But yeah. we don't say <laughs> jails for animals. I mean, they are like a jail. We say cages, cages, Begonia. Okay. But I agree with you, Begonia. I don't like to see animals in small enclosures. So I don't like the um, the the cages for birds. And I actually, even though I know I had a goldfish when I was small, but I was irresponsible then, I don't actually like to see fish in very tiny bowls either. I, I think, yeah. you know, I often think like poor little fish just around has and to round run and round. around and round and round and, yeah. and doesn't see anything. Uh -huh. yeah. Like dogs and cats are have a little bit more liberty, don't they, than, than those animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's move on. Uh -huh. Moving on from animals in cages, we have vivariums, which mm. uh, are <laughs> similar to aquariums except that vivariums are more for reptiles like snakes, iguanas, lizards, that kind uh -huh. of thing. Yeah. The reason it's called a vivarium and aquarium, it's because they have a controlled temperature environment. And obviously an aquarium is full of aqua, so water, and a vivarium just has a controlled temperature. I think they have like heat lamps in and they're especially for tropical animals that, that cannot stand the cold, uh -huh, mm -hmm. that, that have to be kept at temperatures. And they are quite popular nowadays, aren't they? These they exotic animals, these reptiles, iguanas and snakes. So things that were really live should be living in the jungle. <laughs> they're not pets as such, but they are kept in in these vivariums. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a snake. I found a snake on my car the other day. What in Valencia? Yeah, it was a windscreen <gasps> vi a windscreen viper. <laughs> Craig, <laughs> a windscreen wiper? No, a viper. A windscreen viper. <laughs> Nothing funnier than a joke that's been explained. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. I hope everybody when... doesn't turn off now. Everybody's going to turn off after that. Yep, joke. we've just lost Very half, bad the, joke, half the viewers, <laughs> half the audience. Anyway, when mm -hmm. um, sadly some people who have um, dogs and cats and other pets, so they don't like to keep them. Maybe they have uh, a present for Christmas and in January they decide they don't want the dog anymore. So unfortunately, dogs that we that go outside and live in the street i think lynn mentioned this before they're called strays stray animals mm -hmm. and they tend to be collected and put in an animal shelter so an animal shelter is like a rescue a rescue place for animals that have no place to live and if you are thinking of getting a dog um it's a good idea to get one from a shelter because you're mm -hmm. giving a dog a home 
And I think the shelters are not just for dogs, no, it's for all sorts of animals that yeah. are abandoned. A lot of animals are abandoned. And then you, if you're thinking of getting one, it's better to go to a shelter and um, and to adopt one there. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hi, Arturo. Arturo is watching from Honduras. And ah, Luis, Luis Fer is, is also watching from Guatemala. Ah, great. So, uh, uh -huh. Truly worldwide audience learning That's about great. animals and nice. pets. Uh -huh. Yeah. And of course, you're in tropical countries, aren't you? In Honduras, in Guatemala. So you have so snakes and lizards. You yeah. have snakes and lizards naturally out there. So would you guys think of having those animals as pets? Or is that something very odd that people in Europe do? <laughs> or, yeah, is that uh, is it a strange idea to have those kind of animals as pets? Uh -huh. Let us know. Yeah, tell us what okay. you think. So you can keep a bird in a cage and you can take a pet to the vet. Vet is short for veterinarian uh, or veterinary surgeon, um, but we just say vet for short. So to take a pet to the vet, the vet is the doctor for animals. Mm -hmm. So let's look okay. at um, some questions we've got for you. And if you do have an opinion, then please tell us mm. what you think and we can discuss it now. Is it fair to have a pet, to keep an animal in your house? Uh -huh. Sometimes there's this accepted idea that, yeah, everybody has a dog. You should have a dog. The neighbor has a dog. There's this social pressure from the media or from your community to have mm -hmm. a pet. We have somebody in this area where I live who has a pet pig, and she <laughs> walks along. The, seriously, she walks mm -hmm. around the street with a pig on a lead which mm -hmm. I think is very, very strange. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Do you think pets have become accessories? I think they have to a certain degree. Yes, I think they have. I think, I mean, you can see it be, because certainly here in Spain, I'm not sure about England now, but in Spain, there is a mass, but I think it's general because I read an article, even it's the same in Britain and in the US. There has been a massive increase in the amount of people who have pets nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was a child, people had pets, but a lot of people who had big dogs, for example, had big gardens, you know, yes. or they lived in big houses. Often they had dogs for security of the house as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a working dog. If it's a dog it for security, a dog. Uh -huh. or if yeah. it's a, a dog for herding sheep, if it's a, a shepherd uh -huh. who has a dog, then it's a working dog, which I think is something completely different. For mm -hmm. years, animals have helped humans by working for them, horses, uh -huh. dogs. But is it fair to uh -huh. domesticate and when, well, these when I was When I was a child, if you had a dog and you lived in an urban area, they tended to be smaller dogs, like like the one uh, Yorkshire Terrier. I think mm -hmm. Bogonia says so she's got a Yorkshire Terrier. So they were smaller dogs. But nowadays, you see all sorts of dogs in and living. And, for example, we have a neighbor here, too, in this area. And you see them, and they have four huge St. Bernard dogs. Those are those rescue dogs from the Alps. They have loads of hair. Mm. Yeah. And they are huge. They're like little ponies. And they yeah. live in a flat with them. And I do see them taking them for walks. So they regularly take them for walks. So I'm not suggesting that they're not looking after the dogs. I believe that they're looking after the dogs. But I don't know. I think to myself, is it really kind for the dog to be living in a flat when you're such a big dog, you know? Or, or sometimes in Spain, it's been very popular recently to have husky dogs. Husky dogs live in very cold temperatures in, in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. And then to have them in Valencia, where it gets really hot in the summer, that's what I was thinking. I think I it's more an issue it's, of the weather it's kind, because you know, I, to I have don't those think kind it, of dogs. if they do give the dog exercise regularly, mm -hmm. I don't think the dog would mind where it sleeps and where it eats if it's mm -hmm. running and if it's getting the exercise it needs. But as you say, I think the problem is those dogs are not native to Spain. So mm -hmm. a dog with that much hair who lives in a cold climate shouldn't mm -hmm. be living in Spain in July and August. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in my opinion i don't think it's yeah. fair uh-huh well i i uh, it's 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 a strange and then of course um 
when we talk about pets having become accessories, it is true. And I think this social media like TikTok and that there are certain people who like to have like certain dogs. So you see, um, I, you see, I see around, there's a lot of like young men of a certain like age and they're kind of like a bit hipster in their look. And they like to have like these bulldogs, these um, these quite ugly dogs, these fighting dogs, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 it it matches their image, you know. And then there are on the contrary, there could be women who have sort of very like very pretty dogs, <laughs> and they and and then you see some people who put clothes on the dogs as well. <laughs> And they yeah. accessorize their dogs with like with with coats and jumpers and you yeah. know. So I'm not sure about that, about whether it seems a bit odd to me, a bit suspect, but maybe I'm being too I don't know. As I say, I haven't I've got to be careful about my opinion because I'm not a, a dog or an animal expert. I don't really know. You know, maybe if you have one and you really love it and you see your dog shivering, maybe you think, yeah, I'm going to buy a fur coat, you know, or a, or a scarf or something. I don't know. Maybe you can tell us, the people who have, um, have animals. Do you think that, f that dogs are an accessory sometimes? Mm -hmm. Well, Marie Clara, Marie Clara says that during the pandemic, dogs became an accessory somehow. Some yeah. people just got them to be able to go outside yeah and yeah. i know also that um some men have dogs because it's easy to meet girls if you have a dog oh. dog owners <laughs> tend to speak and and the dogs meet each other it's a, it's an yeah. ice breaker it's yeah. a way to break yeah. the ice uh -huh. for uh, young people to meet each other on the street uh -huh. but not just young people old people too because i mean old sometimes people when yeah. people are lonely if they've lost their partner sometimes people suggest get a dog and then you'll go out and you'll meet people and you'll talk to people and it's a way to get it is it's like that therapeutic thing sometimes you could be giving people advice to get an animal to to heal themselves so if you're going to use your animal for that that's also kind of a bit of an accessory isn't it or well, it's, it's funny a... you should say that because mm -hmm. when my sister's husband died she about a year after she said to me she was thinking of getting a dog mm -hmm. and then uh, for a while she was really keen on the idea of getting a dog to keep her company mm -hmm. and i said are you going to take it for walks two or three times a day in the rain when it's cold mm. to give it the exercise it needs and then she decided it wasn't a good idea yeah but yeah i can understand why people do that uh-huh yeah begonia yeah. agrees she says some people use uh use them as an accessory uh, yeah yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah and Diana says they're not toys. Yeah, we have to respect mm. their nature. I agree. But 100%. I think on the other hand as well, we ha I have to recognize, I know lots of people who have pets who, who take very good care of the their, their pets and they do respect the nature of the animal, you know? They they think a lot about whether the, what, what they're doing with the animal, whether it's good for the animal or not, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. Lewis for saying, be careful with those uh, St. Bernard dogs that your neighbor oh. has. They might <laughs> become angry. Oh, um. <laughs> I think that they're, they're very well right. behaved, actually. I've seen them because sometimes we're sitting in the cafe and, um, and they pass. But I have to say the St. Bernard dogs seem to be very, very um, mild in nature. I've never seen them barking. Mm-hmm. And I've never, I've never heard them barking and I, they never, ever, they're not these dogs that come and especially for women, often they jump at women, you know, they smell you as a woman and they, they jump at you. And the St. Bernard dogs have never done that when they've walked past me or when I've been sitting in a cafe and they've been very close. So I ha they seem to be quite good. There are other, <laughs> there well was trained. a, there was a Yorkshire yeah. Terrier, Begonia once that when I was walking my children to school, that a man was coming with two, he had two or three little Yorkshire Terriers and they were yap, yap, yapping and coming. And because we were coming opposite, we were going to cross our paths, they started to get very excited. And I remember it was in the summer and it grabbed my ankle. 
and I was just walking and it, <laughs> it bit onto my ankle did and I was pulling. Did it, did it bite you? It didn't put its teeth, it didn't break the skin, mm. but it grabbed me. And then, of course, I pulled away. And, of course, it was only a little Yorkshire, Yorkshire Terrier and it was on a leash. So the the owner had the dog. He was pulling in one direction, and I was walking in the other direction. But I was quite <laughs> I was quite traumatized by the little thing that attacked me. <laughs> wow, says Bogonia. Yeah. Uh, she also, Bogonia lives in Cadith, which gets very very hot in oh, the summer, yes. and uh, they are husky. Like some people have huskies there, and it's uh, not. Huskies should be in the north of Europe. They should be uh -huh. in Iceland, in Switzerland, in 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 the North Pole, pulling mm -hmm. sledges. They shouldn't mm -hmm. be walking around Spain in the summer. Hema mm -hmm. says, if you decide to have a dog, you should think about the pros and cons. It's a a responsibility. It is. Well, let's uh -huh. talk about the cons. What are the mm -hmm. disadvantages of having pets? Well, you have mm -hmm. to take them for walks regularly mm -hmm. give them the exercise they need they can be mm -hmm. expensive yeah very expensive and not only I the food it's the vet mm -hmm. bills paying for the injections the inoculations mm -hmm. paying for um, medical care from the vet yeah and i was talking to a friend of mine recently and um she had cats and she loves her cats. She looked after her cats and the cats were getting old. And then one of the cats was getting ill and they took it to the vet. And the thing is now, she said, the medical, um, the medical possibilities for keeping pets alive have extended like they have for humans. So a few years ago, if your cat or your dog had a tumor, a cancerous tumor, usually they would immediately have said it's it's kind to the animal to put the animal down. So we use that phrasal verb, to put an animal down, which means to euthanize, to kill the animal, so with an injection at the vets. But nowadays, because the medical, there's been so many medical advances in veterinary science that now if you take your cat, as she did, to the vet, the vet said, oh, we can start chemotherapy. <laughs> That's so expensive. No, and it's very expensive. Yeah. And the vet was proposing to her to first have an operation to remove the tumor and then to put the cat through chemotherapy. And these are very, very expensive veterinary bills. Yeah. And I think that that is also, I mean, so it, there's a financial disadvantage of having a pet because you can suddenly be faced with massive medical bills. <laughs> and um, and the other very difficult is, is that now you are forced to make this decision. Ah, but, you know, have I got the money? Have I not got the money? I don't want to kill my animal. And of course, you must have a an emotional connection with the animal. Mm hmm and these are decisions now that 40 years ago, nobody had to make. It was just if your animal got ill, your animal was euthanized. You put it down, you know? yeah. You put it down. But nowadays, people are faced with some big decisions with their animals. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other disadvantages? Oh, Maria Clara Maria's has got one. Mm -hmm. an idea. You might have problems with other people. Mm. For example, a dog could bite a person or attack another pet. Yes. And mm. also, less drastically, I hate seeing the mess, excuse me, the shit on the floor mm -hmm. when I go out for a walk because mm -hmm. other people are too lazy to pick mm -hmm. up the mess that their dogs have left. That mm -hmm. really, really annoys me. And mm -hmm. I don't see why um, that other people who don't have pets Mm -hmm. should have the streets covered in in dog's mess um, and it also can cause problems in 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 friends groups sometimes because for example if you do have if, if you have a cat it's not so much of a problem because you can leave the cat at home cats are quite happy to be at home on their own aren't they yeah but dogs are not and if you go away or if you go out for dinner Sometimes there are some dogs that 
start to cry. They start to whine. They, they can't really be left for long periods alone at home. And, and that can cause problems for your neighbors if you leave them, exactly. <laughs> which is what I had where, where I had to listen to the dog crying all night and I was feeling very guilty and couldn't sleep. And should I call the, you know, should I call the RSPCA or, you know, the shelter or what should I do? Because I felt very helpless. Mm -hmm. um, but it also causes problems if you insist on taking your pet to your friend's house houses if your friends are not comfortable with having pets in their house because one of the reasons I don't want a pet in my house is that I spend all my time cleaning up after my family and I don't want to clean up after a pet <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to be honest that. but I that's, that's that. the, the, the case yeah Lewis says that another disadvantage you have to feed the animal which means mm. money for food that's very Absolutely. true and, and at like... the moment, with the rising prices, that's been in the news. I've read articles about that, about pet food has become very, very expensive. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he also says you have to pick up after your pet. I like that expression. To mm -hmm. pick up after an animal mm -hmm. or to pick up after your children means mm -hmm. to clear up or clean up the mess that they make. Yeah, but the advantage of children is that eventually they grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 then they start to behave and pick up after themselves you know yeah so and then they th earn money and they support you when you get older. Eight, well, <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't quite say that but the advantage is with 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 it, it's different with a pet isn't it because i think when you have a pet you have to realize that the pet is always for its entire life going to be dependent on you mm. and for most people if you know if you're blessed and your your child is healthy that's not the case with children children do you know grow up and um and and finally you get your independence back and you still have your child <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but with a pet it's not quite the same is it mm -hmm. no it's not that's for sure mm -hmm. i think we've got time for one final question okay um, why don't you choose one lynn which which of these um, questions do you fancy I want the question about what about the pets? Let's think about the pets. Do you think it's a good life for a pet to be a pet? <laughs> Is it good for them? Um, we don't know, do we? Because they can't mm. speak to us. It seems like dogs appreciate owners a lot more than cats do. Mm. Um, but... I don't think it's it. I think it's a very selfish thing sometimes to have a pet because the pet didn't ask for you to take it into your house. No. Um, we have the pet to keep us happy because it mm -hmm. makes us happy. And yeah, we love the animal and we try to make the, the animal happy, but, but we don't really ask the animal if they want to live with us. The animal mm -hmm. can't speak for itself. So it mm -hmm. does seem a bit selfish, but, also, I do understand that people do love their animals and they do take care of them. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much like you. I think like I don't like to see, I think it's bad for pets like goldfish in bowls. I'm not that keen on seeing fish in aquariums either um, because there's no interaction with the fish in the aquariums. You're just putting the fish. It, it's a visual thing that you enjoy looking at, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think with cats and dogs, it can be different because, you know, you can make a pleasant life for a cat. They might enjoy exploring your house and, you know, <laughs> the heat and the warmth and the food. Yeah. And the same with the dogs. I think, you know, the dogs can have fun with you. And, and with kids, they seem to enjoy playing. Uh huh. Um, but there are some animals, I think, like especially like snakes and iguanas and reptiles. I can't understand that. I love seeing those animals in the wild. I think it's lovely to see the animals in their but, natural habitat. If you but can. that's interesting. Why do we think that, and I agree, but why do we think that it's not natural to have a snake as a pet, but it is natural to have a dog or a cat? What makes dogs and cats? Well, I didn't say I think it's natural, but I think dogs and cats have been domesticated over hundreds and hundreds of years, haven't they? 
more uh-huh. accepted yeah uh-huh. mm-hmm. hmm. but it's true i, I don't know uh-huh. i i don't know and there are many domesticated animals that are not pets but like cows for example that you know probably wouldn't exist in the numbers that they do if they hadn't been domesticated. I mean, cows and chickens and those kind of animals that feed us, <laughs> they have all been domesticated, haven't they? You know? Yeah. yeah so it's I hard to this. imagine whether those animals would, what would happen to those? Could those animals live in the wild now? Could a Yorkshire Terrier live in the wild? Not for very long. And I don't think they can because I think they've we've had them. They've been domesticated for so many centuries. These but, dogs, but the way and, the world's and, and the way the world's going, that's what's going to happen. I think I don't think there is going to be much wild anymore because yeah, it's true. just getting mm-hmm. smaller. So eventually, mm-hmm. we're going to have this situation mm-hmm. where it's not an, a normal environment for the animals to live in. Yeah, Let's finish yeah. with what people are saying because there's been yeah. some comments coming in. Mm-hmm. Begonia says that the main disadvantage is when they pass away. Absolutely. I can imagine that. And often yeah. as well, Begonia, because you have to decide the moment when they pass away. Yeah. That's what that was so heartbreaking with my friend whose cat had cancer. It was awful. Uh-huh. It's like losing a member of the family. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. It really is. Emma says that uh, you interact with the dog or the cat. Yeah, mm-hmm. you do. They do become part of the family. Rather than, I think she must be meaning rather than with the snake or the reptile, do you think, maybe? Is that what oh, you mean, yes. Emma? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that could be what, what Emma means. That, that's yeah. maybe why the, they, they are more acceptable as pets because there is some communication there. There is definitely, even yeah. with cats. Uh-huh, yeah. Charlie says she can't he can't imagine wild chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to imagine wild chihuahuas. I think chihuahuas already are wild. <laughs> that could be They're a crazy good idea. Little dogs, chihuahuas. A good idea for uh-huh. a horror film, I think. Chihuahuas yeah. on a plane where they attack oh, the gosh. pilot and the plane uh-huh. crashes. No, that would be terrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we quickly mm. review the vocabulary before we say goodbye? Yeah, because there wasn't that. there wasn't that much, was there? Let's go uh-huh. back to dogs then. We had uh-huh. kennels, the home of the dog, where the dog lives, or where you give your dog for a short period of time when you go on holiday because it's like a hotel and you pay for your dog to be in the kennels. Mm-hmm. And the lead or the leash... And the collar, that's what you do with the dog when you take it for a walk. So the collar goes around its neck and the, the, the rope or the string is called a lead in British English or a leash in American English. Mm-hmm. And the breed is the type of dog you have. So we've had today Yorkshire Terriers, we've had Chihuahuas, German Shepherds, Huskies. They St. are Bernard's, all different breeds. Uh-huh. St. Bernard's, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And obedience training is when you try to train the dog to respond to your commands and do what you want it to do. <laughs> and dogs seem to have a good um, ability to do that, don't they? Because they, we, we can train dogs to do many, many things. Uh-huh. Yeah. Even smell for COVID, uh, that was the latest training mm-hmm. for dogs. I remember when I went through Los Angeles Airport, I had to pass a dog and it was sniffing me to see if I had COVID. Yeah. It was from the, the, the border guards. We're using the dogs to sniff for COVID. Mm-hmm. If you do this on the head of the dog, you're patting the dog. Um, and to pet a dog, we also use the verb to stroke, to stroke the fur of the dog. Mm-hmm. And bark, growl, and whine are the sounds that the dog makes. Woof, woof, arr, or meow. <laughs> no, that was a cat, wasn't it? That was a, cat. <laughs> that was a meow. <laughs> a dog, woo. <laughs> no, I haven't done that right either. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we'll, we'll move on. Um, <laughs> cats, cats go to the toilet in a litter tray. And when it's time for the cat to get some fresh air, we'll go to the toilet outside. Then you let the cat out. Mm-hmm. You stroke a cat, as we said, uh, when we when we pet a cat. Uh, the whiskers are the little, um, like the moustache that the, the, that the cat has, the hairs, the very long hairs that come above its mouth. 
And cats like to keep themselves clean. Their fur is their coat and they like to lick it to keep it clean. Sometimes the fur goes in their mouth and they have a, a, a fur ball which they have to eject. And meow and purr are the sounds that I can make, which is meow and purr. Very nice. That's better Perfect. than the dog ones. Yeah, it? better. Than, uh -huh. Your cats are better than your dogs. Cats are better than dogs. Uh, goldfish bowls, goldfish, fish live in bowls or aquariums. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, I understand what Lynn says, but then they're safe in aquariums, whereas if they're living in the sea, then another big fish can come and eat it. So I think aquariums mm -hmm. are safer, although the fish might get a bit bored going round mm -hmm. and round and round. And, and I think my fish... goldfish ate the other one. I think it's quite common for goldfish to kill each other. Yeah, if they're hungry mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. Turtles tend to live in water, and a tortoise, which can also be a pet, lives outside of water. Mm -hmm. Then we have cages, and the birds are usually in these cages that are put in the living room. We have parrots, which actually talk. Canaries that sing pretty, and they, they, they have a, a pretty song. And then we also have sort of more stable cages, which are on the ground, and in those, we often have types of rodents, so skunks, which have a very long tail and smell, ferrets, which also are quite long and have a big, long, furry tail, rabbits, which are nice, um, hamsters, which are sort of big mice, I think, <laughs> yeah. a mice, and then a gerbil, which is a small one too. They're all kinds of rodents. Mm -hmm. And reptiles live in vivariums like lizards, iguanas, snakes, those mm -hmm. kind of animals. Animal shelter is if you find abandoned animals on the street, they are called strays, and it's a good idea to take them along to the animal shelter. People can go, go to the animal shelter if they want a pet, and they can adopt a pet, so they can get a pet for free from the animal shelter. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's it. Yes, Hema, thank you for watching. It's been a lovely stream. We've enjoyed it very, very much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll be back again two weeks from mm -hmm. today yeah. um, with a different topic. But until then, we'll remind you that if you want to study English, go to mansioningles.com where you can study courses for free, especially if you're a, a Spanish speaker. And if you're interested in, in studying with me and doing a conversation course with a small group of lovely people uh, twice a week or once uh, a week on Sunday, if you have a busy week, then send me an email to this address. My email is mansionteachers at yahoo.com. I'll put that in the chat also. And I will happily send you information about the course. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, which has started, but there will be another one soon. So mm -hmm. <laughs> let me know if you're interested in fluency practice, and I'll send you more information. Lynn, mm -hmm. and if you're interested in tailor-made classes to achieve your objectives, your specific objectives in English, then I can put a course together for you to try to help in specific objectives so if you're interested in that go to my website putitlikethis.com you'll have a sample of all the different types of courses that I teach to give you kinds of ideas and then if you're interested you can contact me over the contact page all right okay thank you for watching if you do mm -hmm. have a pet be nice to your pet take it for a walk stroke oh, your dog yes. stroke your uh -huh. cat uh -huh. and send it lots of love until next yeah. time thanks for watching <laughs> Yeah, we'll thank see you. you. Soon. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.